Besides the methods of elimination and substitution, using the matrix can also determine values from systems of linear equations. Learn what they are here in Numerical Solutions to CE Problems. In algebra, it was discussed that the number of variables required should also be the number of equations provided. In matrix methods, the number of variables dictate the number of columns and rows reflect the number of equations. And if the number of variables is equal to the number of equations, we create a square matrix. There are cases that rectangular matrices are created and solutions to such will be discussed in another video. If we dissect the matrix for the example system, the first column contains the x coefficients, y coefficients are noted on the second column, and the third covers the z coefficients. Moreover, a bar is used to separate the coefficients from the constants, and this type of matrix is what we call augmented matrix. The procedure used in most matrices is row operations, where any deviation is done to each element in one row. The operations include addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In a matrix, one row operation is interchanging rows. From the example, we can interchange row 2 and row 3, and the equation for such operation is the double-ended arrow. Thus, the elements of row 2 becomes 4, positive 6, 5, and negative 6, while row 3 got the element 7, negative 4, negative 1, and negative 15. The second row operation is by multiplying or dividing a non-zero constant. From the same example, we can actually reduce the elements in row 1 by dividing them by 3, or in equation, we say row 1 divided by 3 is the updated row 1, and the elements become 1, 0, negative 3, and 11. The third row operation involves replacing any row by the sum or difference of a constant multiple of another row. So let's say that from the example, we wanted to update the third row by subtracting 4 times row 1 from row 3. Starting from element 3, 1, we have R3 as 4 minus 4 times of R1, showing 4 minus 4 and that gives 0, placed on the third row. For element 3, 2, we have 6 minus 4 times 0, which is still 6, placed in the updated matrix. With element 3, 3, we have 5 minus 4 times negative 3 and that is 17. Then for the constant, we have negative 6 minus 4 times 11, which is equal to negative 50. The methods of matrices can be divided into two, first of which is the Gaussian elimination. This procedure works on the matrix in a manner where the main diagonal should have elements equal to 1, where the elements below the diagonal are 0. This form is known as upper triangular form. The other Gaussian elimination form is when the non-zero elements are located below the main diagonal. This form is known as the lower triangular form. Both forms in Gaussian elimination can also be called row echelon form. The other main method of matrices is Gauss-Jordan elimination which has a slight deviation from the Gaussian elimination. 
The only non-zero elements in the coefficients are those in the main diagonal, and they are even reduced to 1. This format is also known as reduced row echelon form. The next question is how to go about with the reduction. Do we just take any element deemed fit to be a 0 or 1? There is actually a standard flow to follow in both forms, but in our discussion, we will look at how to come up with a reduced row echelon form as it is more comprehensive pattern. First, we need to arrange the equations in specific row patterns to make computation easier. Identify A11 by creating 1. This is what we call pivot element, and it will be used to zero out the other elements in the column. After element 1, 1 is reduced to a value of 1, we eliminate the other elements in the first column, that is make them 0, and this is done by using row operations. At this stage, element A21 has been zeroed out. Step 3 is similar with the previous step, as we must zero out element A31, and this is also by using the pivot element A11. After completing the first column, we can now move to the second column and again start with looking for a pivot element to be placed at element A22. Always, it is easiest if our pivot element is reduced to a value of 1. After identifying element A22 as 1, we zero out the other elements in the second row, and those elements involved are A12 and A32. Now, for the last column, we create another pivot element for element A33. This will be from the last equation which was never used as a pivot row. Then we take the pivot element 33 to eliminate elements A23 and A13. After this step, we can note that our augmented matrix resulted to reduced echelon form where the main diagonal contains all 1s and the other coefficient elements are 0. Applications of the flow will be shown in the succeeding videos of the different methods in solving systems of linear equations, so stay tuned.